for our first speaker of day two of the Commerce Next Virtual Summit, I'm excited to have Aaron Sinandras, CEO of Untucket, join our virtual stage. We'll be talking to Aaron about new customer journeys, traversing stores and online. So uh, turn your camera and join us, Aaron. All right, Scott, uh, good morning and thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So. Um, I wanted to just jump right in, and if you could take a few minutes and maybe explain the uh, the current Untuck It story and what you've been going through the past five months or so with COVID and some of the major changes that you've been dealing with. Sure. Well, well look, it's been a, a very interesting uh, and challenging five months, to say the least. Um, Obviously, the, the pandemic created a whole host of challenges for, for retailers, uh, particularly those retailers that have any sort of significant uh, physical footprint. Um, fortunately, our online business remains strong throughout. So as I said, the real challenge for us had been on the retail side, where we just had this massive dislocation between what our landlords were looking for in terms of rent and, and just the general economics of the stores, two of those months where the economics were uh, you know, a goose egg. Um, and we're seeing continued challenges, obviously, in those areas where, the, you know, where we've been most hardest hit by the pandemic, so the New York stores and, and California stores. Um, and, you know, fortunately, we, we do have good relationships with their landlords and we're working through those misalignments as we speak. Um, I think, though, there, there are always, and, and I'm a pretty optimistic person kind of by nature, so there's always tailwinds and opportunities uh, that come out of, of the chaos sometimes. You just need to look for them. You know, so for us, We've been you know, able to improve our marketing efficiencies. We spent a lot of money on marketing. And so what we did during the outset of the pandemic was we pulled all of our marketing spend back. And then we started to relayer our marketing spend between digital and radio and TV and podcasts um, and basically gave us the opportunity to remeasure some of those efficiencies, uh, which absent a, a situation presenting itself probably just wouldn't have happened, right? We were spending a lot a month and you've got this, this train that just keeps on chugging. So you never want to put your full up, you know, pull your, your foot off the gas, as they say. Um, also, in terms of, of something that may work well for us coming out of this, is that the country has definitely taken several steps to the more casual um, which should help, obviously, because at our core, our brand's ethos is really looking smart, even at your most casual. So, as I said, there there are opportunities for retailers to improve their efficiencies or improve their positioning. Um, they just need to, to take a moment, you know, and think about it. Great. And what, I, I want to get back to uh, kind of the, the country going more casual um, in a later question. But sure. for first, I just I wanted to just talk about um, your omni-channel experience. So um, Untucket has a strong reputation for its store experience, and it's a relatively new company and brand. Uh, so it's been it was kind of born in the age of digital. Um, and so, you know, can you help us explain, even pre-COVID, what was your ideal omni-channel experience? How were, you know, what did you want to make available to customers as they were, you know, moving between stores and digital? So, for us, pre- and post-COVID, our view of omni-channel hasn't really changed. Um, and let me kind of explain what I mean. So for for us, omnichannel is really about it's really about choice and convenience, right? So for the better part of the last five months, the the omnichannel shift into online has really been around choice. Either there was no choice, stores were closed, or there was a very reduced appetite to venture into physical stores as you know states start to open through phase one and phase two and phase three. Um, now, some of that we can't control. That's that's an individual preference, and we just need to make sure that we've got the infrastructure to be able to support somebody who used to shop in a store to push them online. 
Where we've spent more of our time, Scott, is around the convenience portion of that kind of omni-channel uh, experience. And so, you know, things like making curbside pickup or shop your local store through our, our website, making those available to our online shoppers um, is something that we've rolled out over the past few months. We also rolled out kind of a video shopping experience uh, with a company called Hero um, that enables our, our store associates to, to first of all, talk to, to customers via a chat feature um, that could be just chat, it could be just video. And as the stores start to open up, these store associates do this you know, within the confines of, of the store. So you have a much more personalized shopping experience through our online channel than you probably ever would have had before. Great. Uh, so, I mean, one of the other things that Untalk it's known for is, you know, carefully listening to its customers when it comes to not just the, the omni channel and the shopping experience, but actually the products that you're developing and, and putting out into the market. And there's a lot, um, I think, that customers have to say. They're going through a lot of change right now. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, what you know, what have you been doing to listen to customers? Are there any new communication channels that you've dialed into? Um, have there's been anything like online communities uh, that have allowed you to collect that customer sentiment? Because I think, you know, just just like you were talking about resetting the marketing and remeasuring again, it seems like there's a lot to learn, relearn about what, what's going on in the minds of customers right now. Right, Nook, and, and you're absolutely right. Keeping kind of close communications and, and two-way dialogue with our customers has been something that we've done since day one. And we are still kind of leveraging those channels. And, and the channels for us are queries or comments that come through customer service. They all get funneled up, packaged, and, and sent up to corporate. Our store associates are, are a great um, feedback mechanism. And you know, end of the day, every day, our store associates put that feedback into emails, which are again swept up into corporate. Um, what we learned is, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that there has been a major shift to to the casual. Um, I don't know about you. Right now, you're wearing a, a button-down shirt. I think for the early stages of of the working from home, we saw a lot of button-down shirts on Zoom. Then the shirts became polos, then they became t-shirts, and then you know a lot of people just weren't showing up on video anymore because they were tired of it. Um, and so what we've seen is this massive shift to the casual. And so we're selling through during this time, you know, products like our, you know, I'm wearing one right now, are, are wrinkle-free and performance polos. Like I live in these, um, and they're they're perfect for for kind of working at home. Shorts are another category for us that have seen you know really unbelievable penetration. Um, you know, as I said, that said, people are starting to go back into the office. They are starting to to see more structure on the corporate side. And so lately, and I'll say lately the last you know, 30 days, we have seen an increase in sale of button downs, which are kind of a core product as people are like, look, okay, it's been five months of sweatpants, tees and, and weekly showers, right? It's time for me to start getting dressed again and showing up. Um, and so I expect we're gonna see more of that and some of this pent up need to, to kind of refresh people's wardrobes. And kind of going back to the shopping experience, you mentioned things like curbside pickup and uh, I'm assuming buy online, pick up in the store for the stores that were open. Um, were, uh, how, how many of these programs were introduced um, after COVID hit? And you know, what, what were some of the things you were hearing from customers that shaped them? Or there, was there anything unique in the way that you were rolling some of these out uh, during COVID that uh, you know, was answering some of these customer uh, customer questions or comments? Yeah, so most of those initiatives didn't start post-COVID. They, they were in process pre-COVID. Um, however, all of those were rolled out during the, the pandemic. So what the pandemic did is effectively, Scott, put a catalyst in the need to have some of these things. So the buy online, pick up and store, if you think about it, there's two components for why customers want to do that. 
And candidly, the larger one among our customer base for those that shop in stores was supporting their local stores. Um, and that goes and speaks volumes about our sales associates. We have tremendous sales associates throughout the US, um, Canada and the UK, where customers do feel a sense of loyalty to the store. Um, and so they wanted to be able to shop online, but shop a, a particular store, either a Madison Avenue store or a 900 North Michigan store um, to support those stores. And so what we did was we effectively rolled them out completed them in probably a third of the time that we had originally projected. Most of these were supposed to be rolled out for Q4. That was the original kind of timeline. But we recognize that that we'll need to accelerate that um, in order to address, again, a, a demand among our customers. Um, that's great. Um, it's interesting how these things have been a, a catalyst for uh, so much. And there's been so much accelerated innovation happening right now. So kind of along those lines, I mean, there's yeah. a, a number of different kind of narratives on innovation uh, that are being discussed in around digital retail and omni-channel. And I want to do a little bit of a quick fire. Some of these right. touched on a little bit. Um, and, uh, and I'd be interested in, you know, not just your point of view overall, because you're implementing some of them, but also kind of your thoughts on, you know, are, are these going to stick around in the long term? So Maybe we'll start with curbside pickup, buy online pickup in the store. Um, you guys have implemented that. You know, what's your thoughts on that sticking around long term? Is it, do you see the levels going down in the future or maintaining and, and sticking around? Okay, so rapid fire, I would say definitely necessary valued service to our customers. I see that increasing as, as time goes on. And so another one is appointment shopping. So, uh, you know, get, you know, ha having someone come in, make an appointment, go in, meet with yeah. a store associate during a certain time. Um, are you doing any of that? What's your point of view on that? So we are, um, and we did roll out appointment shopping when we started to open stores. That's one area that I, I would have said valued and maybe short term value for us. We're not a made to measure business. So this would be more about safety. Um, however, I was surprised that the appointment shopping uh, take up rates were lower than I'd expected. So valuable, certainly val more valuable for some businesses than others, uh, just in ours. We'll continue to have it. It's something that for those that utilize it, it is important to them. And again, we talk about convenience and choice. Um, but in terms of surprise, I would have thought more people would have been plugged into the appointment shopping than, than we've seen to date. And, and it sounds like you're doing the some of the uh, the video visits to store associates. So kind of yep. you know talk about that. And and I I think our audience would be interested to hear. You know, are you using you know FaceTime uh, or is there a different kind of technology? And what's been the the pickup rate on that? And and do you think that's going to stick around? Is it just that feels like uh, kind of fits into that convenience uh, theme yep. that you mentioned earlier? We use a company called Hero um, that we partnered with to provide that, that video chat feature. And, and so it's more than just FaceTime. It, it has kind of an integrated retail support foundation um, <clears throat> where you can do things like refer people over to customer service and, and take orders and place orders. And that has been a tremendous um, success. Now, the challenge for us is how do we get a lot more volume to come through through Hero. So if you think about what most most websites will offer some sort of chat feature, that's pretty standard these days in, in e-com. Um, chat feature is one dimensional and you have a very small percentage of people that actually flow through the chat feature, right? Less than 1%. Um, the Hero chat, we've seen, you know, a exponential growth in the use of what I'll call our online chat feature, which is now supported by video and, and a lot more um, service-based kind of support. However, it would be great if about a hundred times more people came through those channels because what you see around the engagement, what you see around the average order value, what you see around the conversion rates, I mean, it's a stunningly higher um, number than, than the average that, that don't utilize these features. Gotcha. All right. So two more on the quick, uh, the quick fire virtual stores, like the, uh, the 2020 retail version of second life. 
um, and augmented reality. So maybe we'll kind of, these are, you know, AR, VR. Yep, yep, and, and I'll take those in order. So the virtual stores, look, I, I like that the, the concept of the virtual stores for Untuck It, I think our customer might be slightly older than the age you would need to have a virtual store really play an important role in that kind of convenience um, equation. So for me, virtual stores, I would say not on Untucket's radar of things to be looking at in 2020 or 2021 and unlikely 2022, but I'll never say never. Um, and then the augmented reality, that's an interesting one. I love the idea of augmented reality. Um, the challenge has always been that the tech has just not been there. So, and, and again, this is Untucket specific answer. So for us, you know, everything about the shopping experience is the fit, right? And so with augmented reality, the challenge is, you know, sometimes the shirt's slightly askew, sometimes it's, it's too far, sometimes it's too deep. And so it doesn't give the customer a true version or a true vision of what they would look like in the shirt. But I will say, and so by the way, we did look at tech for in stores and we've looked at some tech, you know, through our online uh, site as well. But if the tech improves, I think augmented reality for us would be a really cool kind of 2021 initiative. All right. Well, we uh, have time for just one more question. And you mentioned you're an optimist. And um, I Always. wanted to give you a chance to, you know, share, you know, what you've learned about the pandemic that makes you optimistic about, you know, the future of retail and shopping? So, look, I think there's, if I were to boil it down, I think there's two, right? The first is that people want to get back into physical retail stores. You might not believe that, right? When, when you listen to the news, it's, it's all pretty bad. But we ran a couple of surveys um, through our customer base to understand what their perspectives were on, you know, would they return to stores? When they would, would they return to stores? What's important for them if and when they do return to stores? And it was overwhelmingly um, leaning and skewed towards, I want to get back to your stores, right? I want to do it when I'm comfortable, but I definitely want to get back into your physical stores. And so when that survey came back and we started to, to, you know, parcel through the the answers, and we just saw how overwhelmingly positive it was. I mean, the it was it was like Christmas for me, right? It was the best news that I had heard in a long time because I knew myself personally. I always try to think, look, I'm not that much different than the average person, and and I was feeling extremely housebound, right, and and kind of pent up. And so I was looking for opportunities as well. And, and just knowing that I'm not alone, right? There's a lot of people that want to get out of their houses. They want to shop. Physical shopping is a core component of the American DNA. Um, so that was one. I think that, that to me was probably the single most optimistic thing. The other one is that we innovate, right? I think when you look at what's happened in, in the last five months, the amount of innovation that's come through retail is pretty staggering. Um, it's a little sad that it took something like the pandemic to, to trigger some of this innovation, but look, it's here. Um, and I think the, the retail, the American shopper will be, will, will certainly be better for it and will benefit greatly from it. Well, great. We, uh, we're up to our 20 minutes. So thank you so much right. for joining and sharing these, uh, this, these different points of view and, and lessons learned with our audience. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate you being with us. Scott, thanks again for having me um, and look forward to speaking with you next.